Florida traffic stop turns terrifying when a reckless motorcycle rider guns it through a red light, dragging the deputy with him. My life was flashing before my eyes. It was so surreal. I just got drugged by a motorcycle. I rode at speed. It's all caught on his dash cam. I thought I was going to die that day. West Palm Beach, Florida. With beautiful weather year-round and wide freeways, the Sunshine State is a playground for renegade drivers. On a daily basis, you see people out on I-95 that are driving just crazy. Very fast speeds, 120, 130, 140, 150 miles an hour. Deputy Mike Musto is a member of the Palm Beach County Sheriff's aggressive driving unit. They just get out there and they're blind. They have no sense of how fast that they're going. At 62 years old, the veteran deputy thought he'd seen it all until the afternoon of March 29, 2011. The day started routinely for me, running my laser speed measuring device on the side of I-95, uh, detecting speeders that uh, I normally get 20 miles an hour over the speed limit before I'll even look at you. Musto is parked under an overpass when suddenly a motorcycle blows by. The speed limit on I-95 is 65 miles an hour, and he went by me at 112. In and out of traffic, following too closely, improper lane change changes. Musto shadows him for about five miles, up an off-ramp to a red line. He never knew he was being followed until I pulled up alongside of him. I parked about four feet from him, got out of my vehicle just as quickly as I could. As he approaches the suspect, Deputy Musto senses something's going to happen. I could just see the way he squinted his eyes and stared a hole right through me. I could see the hatred in his eyes. What happens next literally blows Musto away. I saw him reach for the clutch on the motorcycle. I grabbed him in the area of his right shoulder blade and got a good grip. As soon as I grabbed him and he hit it and he took me off my feet and within a second I was going too fast to let go. Blazing through a red light at a busy intersection, the biker drags Deputy Musto for nearly 300 feet. I probably was drugged behind the motorcycle for four to five seconds. It felt like an eternity. During that moment, I was scared. Hanging on to the outlaw biker, Musto needs to make a split-second decision to save his life. A thousand and thoughts go through your mind is do I let go at 40 miles an hour now or do I let go at 140 miles an hour down the road? In that split second, Musto has another thought. If I could have freed up my left hand and just hung on with my right, which was impossible, and could have freed up my gun hand, I probably would have shot him. But he doesn't. As the biker accelerates, Musto is thrown off just as the bike re-enters the interstate. This guy was not going to stop. He, he would have killed me for a traffic ticket. I rolled around on the ground and my first thought was, well, wow, I'm not paralyzed, I can move. Mother. And I stood up and I said, wow, there's no bones sticking out anywhere here, uh, I can walk. Now Musto finds himself in the midst of oncoming traffic in the center of an intersection. I went to get up and I just saw the light turn green and people didn't want to miss the green light so they just went right on through the intersection. No one offered help. Dazed and disoriented, Musto dodges oncoming traffic. One lady that was parked next to my patrol car when this whole thing happened and I could see her mouthing to me, are you all right? I'm all right. He returns to his patrol car and immediately pursues the biker. He also radios dispatch. I just got drugged by a motorcycle. High rate of speed, north on I-95. In this line of work, you hear signs, uh, you know, people who you've worked with, and you go, know, that's just, it didn't sound normal. Deputy Will Farrell is a half a mile away when he hears his friends call for help. And you start hearing in his voice, you start hearing that adrenaline, you know, tired sound. White motorcycle, black leather jacket, Hispanic rider, some kind of a tap of a uh, logo on the back. Musto's call sets off a countywide manhunt for the suspect, mobilizing officers, patrol cars, even helicopters. Meanwhile, Musto's lost sight of the biker and pulls over to the side of the road. I may have video of the tag, I don't know. Just keep an eye out for this guy. I'm gonna check my video. It's not until now that severe pain sets in. Uh, I'm skinned up a little bit, my uniforms are ripped. 
I don't need EM. The pain was pretty intense. Uh, my scrapes were pretty big, and deep. I didn't even feel pain until 10 minutes later when things started burning. I didn't know how bad it was for Deputy Musto until I got there. When Farrell reaches Musto, the drag deputy isn't in good shape. As I'm approaching him, he's, he's out of the car. He's very excited. I want to make sure he's okay first. Sit down. I'm on, I'm on. I want you to make sure, though. Sit down. Buddy. Musto refuses EMS. Instead, he insists they watch the dash cam video, looking for any identifying information. When I first saw the video of Deputy Musto getting dragged, I have the same feeling I have now in this goosebumps. You watch him as he falls off the bike, and he rolls around, and he's telling me he doesn't want to go to the hospital. I'm like, well, you're going to the hospital. I mean, that's pure toughness. The deputies can't see the license plate. The biker tucked the tag under the seat, hidden from view. But Musto's earlier dispatch yields a lead. White motorcycle, black leather jacket. The bike is spotted in a nearby strip mall parking lot, only a mile away from the scene of the crime. The motorcycle is parked in front of a barbershop. Sergeant Steven Wessendorf of the Boynton Beach Police Department is working in a nearby mall when he hears the call. He knows this barbershop very well. I, of course, recognized it only because I get my hair cut at the barbershop that it was found in front of. When I heard that it was this barbershop, I knew who owned the motorcycle. In the barbershop, there's only one guy that drives a motorcycle, and that's Mr. Morales. With a matching description of the bike and suspect, Palm Beach Deputy Ron Cohen arrests Victor Morales. Mr. Morales was a barber, and he was late for work, and he was on his way to the barbershop at the time that this all happened. The logo emblazoned on the back of Morales' jacket is for the Zero to 60 Motorcycle Club. God forbid Deputy Musto would have got killed that day. He would have been charged with manslaughter. He would have gone to jail for a very long time, just over a speeding ticket. A jury finds Morales guilty of resisting an officer without violence. He's found not guilty of fleeing and eluding a police officer. He also gets a speeding ticket. I think he would have rather killed me than to get a couple of traffic tickets. I really do. Deputy Musto is taken to Bethesda Hospital and treated for injuries, including road rash. While most of the physical wounds have healed, the emotional wounds are still raw. From the second I got back up, I was probably as mad as I've ever been. And I'm still mad. Within a week, Deputy Mike Musto is back in his charger, patrolling his regular beat. If I had to do the same thing over again this afternoon with the same results, I'd do it again. I like the adrenaline rush, and uh, if that guy's going by me at 112 and just looking at me uh, saying, come and get me, well, I'm coming to get you.